This lady may be the librarian, but her appearance has been altered because of Quan Ha's perception of reality. Hi, I'm Will Forge. The librarian story takes place 100,000 years ago. Essentially, though, the Forerunners were an ancient alien civilization. They died off 100,000 years ago by, you know, some kind of mysterious thing right now in the show. Um, and uh, the librarian was one of the people who was tasked with making sure that humanity would sort of inherit everything. She's the reason Master Chief and... Mackie are chosen ones. Uh, what she did was she put something she called the Gene Song, which is spelt the same as a Genesong, which is a type of music. Um, and uh, basically what she did was she, she wrote into our DNA a sort of memory and programming uh, that's kind of like um, Assassin's Creed's DNA memory in a way, um, but it's deliberately put in there instead of being something that everybody creates and stores in our DNA and passes down to our children. So what she did was she created one that would sort of drive us to sort of reach for the stars and eventually discover all of the Forerunner technology and then inherit the mantle of responsibility of taking care of the entire galaxy. Um, this is sort of probably not going to come up in the show all, all that much and there's a reason why I think it's going to be completely changed in the show that I'll get into later. Um, but essentially right now though uh, I want to just talk about why I think it is the librarian. In the Forerunner trilogy, we see that she was able to write into human uh, DNA human ancestors. Like, there were these ancient people, they were the ancients, the advanced human uh, species before the Forerunner defeated them and de-evolved us back to cavemen 100,000 years ago, right? And then, so, what they did was, they then put, she then put uh, a secret uh, gene song into the human species, so that we would eventually evolve back to normal. Um, I think, I believe she put a new one in there before before the, uh, the Halo rings were activated. Um, so, what's happening here is, is that she um she basically went through and and she she embedded some of their ancestors into their own DNA so that they could recover who they were right that's why uh now the ancient humans are called the ancestors is because they were the ancestors that uh later were hallucinated and seen as visions basically uh like a like a native american sort of vision quest kind of thing you could go and seek them out and speak to them and uh, some people viewed them as angels some as gods some as you know spiritual you know uh you know uh, guides and uh, throughout history, right? And that was sort of explaining what human spiritualism or spirituality is, is that we are seeing these ancient, uh, you know, entities talking to us. And this is actually something that still is in humanity after the halos are activated. She just adds to it at the end, right before, you know, it's activated. She does, she has her workers, her life workers do more. Um, and so, um, Essentially, what I'm saying is that uh, when she adds more to it, it's to recover the technology. The first one was just to recover their own standing in the galaxy to eventually rebuild the ancient human high tech civilization. And so, between the two of them, you can hallucinate ancient people because there were people stored in them. But then the second one was built in. I think she embedded some of her husband, the Didact, who was the warrior who defeated humanity and why she felt so bad for humanity in the first place and did all this work for us. Um, and then uh, she also embedded a bit of herself. And we know that she embedded a bit of herself. Oh, I don't know for sure she embedded some of the Didact, but she had two copies of the Didact because the way Forerunners work. She had Isodidact and whatever the original one was called, just the Didact. Um, and uh, essentially, because they, they can sort of copy their minds to one another. Uh, and so she kind of had two different versions of the Didact she could have potentially drawn from. I don't remember uh, who it was that she put in there, if she put any of them, because it was a long time since I read those novels. But essentially what she did was she embedded, we know she embedded herself because we know that humanity hallucinates the librarian in the novels, not ever really shown all that much, but that they it says that we view her as uh, the like perfect old woman, like like this perfect elder, you know, uh, wise woman, basically, is what the uh, the perception of her is, and that's what we have in the show. We have this not necessarily like perfect, as in like 
you know, any kind of visual thing like that. It's supposed to be just like a really old, like wise, you would think to talk to this person. You know, you would listen to this person's advice. And the way that she speaks and the way she acts and the the, the way her eyes look, honestly, that where she's like, that, that actress they got can like, like, you know, whenever she stares at the camera, feels like she's staring into your soul. That kind of thing uh, is actually all like really cool. It adds together to sort of communicate this idea of the librarian that we know of from you know extended lore. She also has that that like tattoo thing on her forehead that looks like a third eye being open. And so I believe what's happening is is that the uh, is that Quan Ha has had her third eye opened, which means she is now able to directly communicate with the entities that are in the uh, that are in the gene song, right? And that means that she might be able to speak to her ancestors or the librarian. And what I think is happening is that she has suddenly become much more com combat, like, competent whenever she, like, beat up those three people who are chasing her, all of which were, like, twice or three times larger than her. Like, there shouldn't have been any way that she could have beaten them in combat, but she did. I think that the way she did all that was because she was, she has, uh, activated the combat skills of the Didact, and, uh, and then now has the ability to speak to the, um, the librarian. And that's why we're seeing her see the librarian in hallucinations. She also now knows about the human, or I mean the uh, the forerunner and flood war, which is why she knows about the beast. And all of this is really cool. Uh, I think this is actually really badass and is a really cool storyline. And I think anybody who thinks that this is non-Halo is silly. The one thing about it is, like, it fits the Halo universe. I think that the one thing that they do have a leg to stand on when complaining about it, though, is that the Halo Halo games and books treat this as a great mystery. So in the show, they've basically taken this mystery device and rearranged it and turned it into foreshadowing for what was going to come later. And like I said, I think it's because of budget. I think it's because they want you to, uh, they're, they're, they're concerned that if they run out of budget, that before, you know, people get invested in what's coming later, then by the time that stuff comes, no one will be watching anymore or something weird like that. I'm not sure exactly what is driving their desire to switch it like this, but uh, I do have one additional theory for that that's sort of like a theory of what's going on behind the scenes and what's going to happen later on. Whenever Quan Ha sees the librarian, she sees her as, a, as an old human woman, which is accurate to the lore. That's what, the, uh, that's what humans see her as whenever the gene song activates, because it's, it's, the gene song isn't, um, it isn't like really specific. It's not like a full-blown video recording. It's more of an essence, a spirit of that thing. You know, that's why it's sort of like uh, feels spiritual whenever humans see it. And it's not technically the librarian, it's the it's the gene song. It's the essence of the librarian speaking to Quan Ha. Now, um, Master Chief in the games also had that happen, but he was inside of a Forerunner structure and an actual like remnant of the librarian in the Forerunner structure was able to sort of, I guess, reinforce it. Or maybe because he's the Master Chief and he's in interacted with Forerunner and stuff like that, he finally saw her for what she was. But there's that moment where the librarian's like, it's not really a hologram, like he... Master Chief is in one room and suddenly like he's in another place, right? He's, he's in one place, suddenly he's in another place. The librarian descends from the sky, talks to him, makes him immune to the activation of the um, composer, and then she proceeds to like disappear and leaves him. She activates a piece of his DNA, uh, one of the gifts from the Forerunners that was already there inside of him. And that made him immune to the composer. So that was like, I mean, in the, sh in, the, in the games in Halo 4, we see exactly what Quan Ha has, has, has happened to Quan Ha, and, and there's nothing that, like, indicates it was done from externally, and so I think it was that a machine, a Forerunner device, and the domain, or something to that effect, contacted Master Chief through his gene song and activated it, which was already there. So she didn't have to, like, remotely do it. She was changing something about his, like, mind, about his perception to reality, about his spirit, his, I guess, practically his soul, his spirit kind of thing. But in a sci-fi sense, rather than in a, like, religious sense, it's sort of like, it's in the DNA, right? And so 
all of this is in keeping with Halo perfectly, and I, I think that it's kind of cool. But anyway, before Halo 4, all the way back in the very first, uh, one of, well, the second novel, the in, in Halo The Flood, the adaptation of Halo 1 to a novel, um, they had this, uh, this very specific thing happen where Master Chief would come up to a computer terminal, and the first time it happened, it was very, very deliberate and drawn out and explained, is that whenever he touches a computer terminal in, uh, you know, a, a forerunner or computer, computer terminal, he just knew which buttons to press. And there was no explanation for why. Whenever Cortana says, how did you do that? He just goes, uh, I don't know. I just, I just thought it was that one. And it's sort of like Master Chief's luck, but that's the thing about Master Chief's luck is that some of it is actually the Gene Song sort of manipulating rea like events to sort of make him be able to accomplish what he needs. It sort of set everything up to culminate in Master Chief accomplishing the tasks he's doing throughout all of human history since the, you know, 100,000 years ago so that he could, you know, stop, you know, prevent anyone else from activating the Halo rings and claim them. Um, so that's the reason why he's got such good luck. Uh, and, and they're really drawing that out in the TV show in ways that I think is really cool. They're sort of taking all the things that are sort of left as mysterious and putting them to the forefront of the show in a way that, yes, it changes the show from the games. Um, they're even putting the politics in the forefront. It sh changes the show from the games and even from the books, but it does it in a way that isn't necessarily like ripping it to shreds. All I want that I've been complaining about uh, about season one and hoping that season two maintains is that the vibe is right, that it feels like Halo, and the way that make it feel like that is like I've been saying the whole time, is about the genre. But anyway, I want to talk about now what I was alluding to earlier about why this could be that she is not like being hallucinated differently. Um, the, in reality, uh, like, like I think that that is the librarian and she's sort of seeing her as a human woman, but that may not be the case in this, in this universe. They have the silver timeline and they have the original story. And there's a lot of fans that have always wanted the original story. There, there was, the, the story from Halo uh, used to be that at the end of Halo 2, it was gonna be revealed that humanity were the forerunners in the first place, and that we activated, we built the Halo rings, we activated them, we fought the flood, we, you know, all of that. And it was, it was gonna be done by the Arbiter uh, talking about how amazing it was gonna be to finally look on the face of a, of a uh, you know, a forerunner. And he opens this like ancient, forerunner structure sarcophagus in the Ark, uh, which is on Earth in that version, um, and he opens it and there is a human skeleton in there. And the idea was that there was a machine in there that was using the DNA and the, the mind remnant, everything like that, from this one last forerunner to uh, sort of guide humanity on the planet toward a specific future. So even then, there was a sort of gene song that led to Master Chief having all that luck, and and that was the reason the Master Chief knew how to, which like which buttons to press. And I think the idea then was even that Master Chief had the consciousness of this Forerunner inside of his mind, and that was why he was able to accomplish everything he did. It's almost like a god in the sarcophagus, Jesus in the you know Mjolnir armor kind of situation, or Thor in, or I mean Odin in the sarcophagus and Thor in Mjolnir armor kind of like relationship between this like not exactly like dead sort of immortal in the machine uh like ghost in the shell like a, 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 a an immortal machine human that had been taken out of their body and the behind left behind just their dna to use to guide all of humanity's like evolution or whatever or development and that was going to be the um the way that essentially uh the forerunner existed in the original halo story um and yeah it it was going to be really cool i'm sure but then they changed it um, because before they actually released it, while it was still in development, I don't think... It, it's perfectly fine to change your story while you're still developing something. I think it's it's ridiculous that there are fans out there that talk all the time and about, like, you know, wishing the story had happened that way. I, that's ridiculous to me. I, it's it's perfectly reasonable to, uh, to, to uh, basically, yeah, rewrite your own story before you release it. So all of the theory crafting that the fans made before that, that then was debunked by their changes to the story, reasonable. It's very right to do that. Anyway, the point is, is that it was changed to where the Forerunner were a separate species. 
But at the same time, it was always on the fence between those two in development. There was always like, well, did they evolve humans from the apes on our planet? And were the uh, was that one in the sarcophagus actually a different species that was the real humans? And we it was evolving us from caveman up into real like modern humans from that manipulation. That's the question that was always there, even with the original sarcophagus idea. So, yeah, anyway separate species in the main storyline. But this is why I bring all of this up, is that in the TV show, the Silver Timeline, they can change that. And they might. And they and the reason I think they might is because CGI is expensive. And making a, um, a Forerunner, like in appearance, you could actually do that with makeup. Forerunners are close enough to humans in their face that you could do that with makeup and then their hands are weird um but like basically skin face like you know stuff like that could like i said be done with prosthetics and if you did it this way then yeah it, you could it would be expensive but if they make it to where the ancient uh you know forerunners were humans in this timeline because it's different they can actually do that and if that's where they're going then they would save money on appearances of the forerunner in the future if they bring in the didact or any other forerunner that might still be alive they might even make this timeline have more forerunner be alive still in shield worlds or on the arc or something to that effect it would be really cool to do that that would be awesome um so like they could take advantage of the fact that they have switched this and what that would also mean is all of the other changes to the timeline could be like a ripple effect of it being humans as the forerunner and i haven't actually gone through and like really thought very heavily about what like ha what connection ties can be drawn from this change because this episode is the first one to introduce me to the idea and with all these changes it would just be really cool to finally see what the story would have played out with if that was the case you know what i mean and yeah i'm just i'm really excited to see how this pans out if that's the direction they're going if it's not i'll also be excited to see the forerunner as portrayed in the you know games that would be still be cool but like if the didact and the librarian are both humans ancient humans i think it would be very interesting you know alternate storyline uh that would be kind of mind-blowing honestly now you might notice this video is like all about this topic and that's because uh i felt like this episode was very straightforward what you see is what you get i don't want to spoil like everything that's happening um like you know master chief halsey riz all that stuff that was happening is exactly what you get uh what you'd expect to see i will say though with um you know uh kai with kai i was predicting she was going to be going off to train the spartan threes and this is the one last thing i want to talk about and this is more theory crafting than even the the forerunner stuff i really do think that's the librarian but the question that it's the humans is still theory crafting that i kind of just uh you know i don't actually know for sure and i don't know if i fully believe it and it may go completely different thing you know direction and then i'll be wrong but when it comes to this theory crafting uh i'm almost certainly wrong but i did want to mention it because it was a thought that occurred to me is uh a lot of people are questioning and i agree how did the spartan threes get trained so quickly they're in the spi armor which is semi-powered infiltration armor um the uh why are they you know already kitted out and ready to go was Ackerson already training these has it been several years that's the probable answer yeah it, it almost certainly is he was already doing the Spartan 3 program before Halsey messed up with the Spartan 2 program and they moved him over to train to lead the Spartan 2 program and also they're finishing up the Spartan 3 program that's probably what's happening um I don't see why it would be anything else but there is a chance that they're making it to where these people are very recent trainees like inductees and how would they become spartans in that amount of time is the question if they had augmentations that were cheaper and safer like they had with the spartan threes they could do that in a matter of probably a couple of hours uh you know if they had a person a, a team for every single one of these 300 spartans they probably could do a a, a, a you know an alteration an augmentation in a couple of hours for all of them so you could have these guys ready in a day but the training is there where they're not spartans if they do not have the training if they don't fight well but in the show they have this special tool master chief had cortana in his brain and they have already established in this season that cortana actually came, whenever they separated them cortana now has 
all of Master Chief's memories and part of his personality and his consciousness in her. So she's not just Halsey anymore. She's Halsey and John, which is going to lead to her being maybe like less, uh, you know, sociopathic uh, than Halsey. Uh, and that would explain how she's so less, so much less sociopathic in the games if they sort of have this as their explanation before they get to the events of the games, any, anywhere close to the events of the games. Um, and that basically, that can explain that. But here's the real thing that is interesting to me. Ackerson had her in that basement. Why was she in the basement? Yeah, he was containing her to make sure she was still safe but to release because he didn't even trust Halsey. Why would he trust a supercomputer version of Halsey that could hack an entire planet and take it over? Maybe the entire UNSC. Maybe take over every single ship in the in the fleet if she really wanted to, right? Um, and so he didn't trust her. That's the real main reason she was in that prison. However, as I was theorizing before, whenever I thought that maybe Halsey was actually uh, an extreme distracted uh, personality of Halsey from Cortana. I was wrong about that, and I knew I was probably wrong about that even then, and I was okay with it being wrong in 50-50. Uh, I'm, I, I throw cool ideas out there, and I'm okay with them being bad uh, if they turn out to not be good, or if they uh, if they uh, turn out to be wrong, I'm okay with that too. Uh, but the point is, is that in this case, I think that what might have happened, potentially, is that Ackerson extracted Master Chief from Cortana copied his program like his consciousness and has implanted it like an ai program chip like they did with cortana into master chief into 300 volunteers that want to get revenge against uh you know the covenant and want to have the master chief in their mind they want to take on the spirit of the master chief and go to war against the covenant and if that's the case they don't have the augmentations of master chief and they don't actually have the training of master chief so they might dip out and into being master chief at sort of like like i'm picturing uh like audio you know recording things you know the those green bars that go up and down like different sections will the different parts of their mind will activate uh at any given point in time during combat and so they, they'll end up not necessarily being master chief all the time 100 percent and so it'll be really interesting to see that it would also be really interesting if one of these spartan threes ends up being especially master chief because that would mean that we have a sort of like a, a, a noble six situation where he's another high Hyper lethal vector, um, which is what the Covenant designate Master Chief as. If when he's set on a path, he's just a hyper hyper lethal vector through you know along that path. He's just going to pu punch through everything. Essentially, an unstoppable force. Hyper lethal vector is just a fancy sci-fi way of saying an unstoppable force, which is already kind of anyway. Uh, the point is, uh, so basically, if we have that, if it ends up being where there is a uh, you know if they've if they've implanted Master Chief into 300 new inductees they wouldn't need training to become spartans they would already be spartans and they wouldn't want to attach cortana to another spartan to extract their personality afterward because it nearly killed master chief and Ackerson doesn't trust cortana so if all of this sort of like it just makes sense to me it's just it, it really does make sense to me that that they could be brand new trainees and inductees which means the really cool thing about that is that perez might be among them if she escaped and then a couple days later she has been augmented and, and and then master chief's consciousness attached to her brain then she could come back as a spartan 3 next episode like any time in the season and it would be crazy it would be awesome so like it wouldn't just be the people you know are going to be spartans it could literally be everyone perez evacuated that was old enough plus whoever else had volunteered from reach that is coming back which would allow them to like take the time scale of the spartan threes like the spartan twos are like like what is it F uh, 30 something years of act of uh of of uh service and the spartan threes are like you know they're they're training and then they're deployed and they're all told like 13 or like like eight years or something like that eight some of them are 13 whenever they start and they're in their 20s whenever they you know whenever they're deployed for their first mission and it's around the time of the fall of reach so it's like tiny little window of, of halo 3s they can shorten it even tinier and show it happen on screen without having to 
tell a story over the course of decades, right? So by doing it the way they're doing, if this is the case, it would be a really clever way of um, of basically using the tools they already have at hand with the cloning, the mind connection, um, you know, uh, basically the Spartan 3 program and the Spartan 2 program and all that and sort of reshuffling the deck and playing their cards a little differently. And then we'll just have this really cool, like, retelling of the story where the Spartan 3s are not just Spartan 3s, they're like actually a next step after Spartan 2s because they're built on the mind of a Spartan 2, which would be just really badass. That also means later when the Spartan 4s come around, they can say they have a remnant of Master Chief's mind, or they can get the remnant of someone else's mind and put it into the Spartan 4 program, perhaps Kai's, or maybe they'll get any living Spartan 2s at the time, including their, their uh, remnant of Master Chief they already have, add them all together and make a Spartan 4 program in a way that the Spartan 4s can actively, or like maybe more reliably, you know, grab from that training and become almost like Spartan 2s in their training, in their augmentation, and basically on the level with them. Kind of like how they are in the original, in the original you know, games. Spartan 2s are still a little bit superior, um, but they're basically roughly on the level. If you take all of the Spartan 2s and all of the Spartan 3s, they overlap a lot. Like, Master Chief might be at the very top of the Spartan 2s and be way higher than the best of the Spartan, uh, Spartan 4s, I mean. Um, but if you take the Spartan 4s and the Spartan 2s, uh, they do overlap a significant amount in their skill and their effectiveness. Like, it's it's like, you know what I mean? Like like that kind of thing. So basically, you can sp end up with a Spartan 2 and a Spartan 4 that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe and then be about equal. But then you also have situations where, you know, Spartan 2 is just mop the floor with the Spartan Force. Anyway, I think that's all I wanted to talk about the episode, except for I think that there was like uh, like Riz, you know, she's she uh, I thought she was going to end up being like Kelly, uh, or sorry, Linda. Um, where she gets heavily wounded, put into a cryo tube, and ends up being on the Alpha Halo. I was hoping that was going to be the case. Turns out to not be the case. She's off doing something else already, and the storyline has already sort of deviated from that potential path. Kind of sad, but they, they, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing how she's going to come back into the story later. Hopefully this is not the result of the actress who plays Riz quitting the show. Um, if it is, and it's because of fan hate, uh, then that's just more of the annoying, you know, BS that happens whenever fans are assholes on the internet. But anyway, uh, if you stuck around this long, you probably want to subscribe because I'm continuing to make these and I'll have more stuff to say that's cool like this about future, you know, episodes. And uh, I'm about to start doing some uh, talking about the games a little bit because there's some things that other people have not talked about. Um, I have something really big I want to talk about and reveal about Agrina. I've been talking about it in text form for a long time, but no one on YouTube has made a video and only a handful of people have like seen my, you know, text posts. Um, I got something about Cat from Noble Team I wanted to talk about. I got George from Noble Team, and I think I have a couple of others I wanted to discuss. And all of these are things that like confirm or uh, or propose ideas that have not been in the Halo fan base space um, in any tangible way. So I'm kind of looking forward to making those and seeing how people react to them and if you guys think that they're like some of them I'm going to need my aluminum foil hat again, you know, with the little Halo ring up top, you know. But uh, that's neither here nor there, especially cats. Cats especially. I think a green is, is almost like guaranteed to be accurate. Cats is unlikely, but maybe, and would be really cool, and uh, George is 100% accurate. It's not like, with George, I'm revealing something about the universe of Halo to people who do not understand it. So that's going to be more of like a educational thing of a fan from the books and everything like that, and the extended media explaining something about what happened in the game that you saw. Anyway, the point is, like, subscribe, I'll catch you later.